Chapter 23, My Emotional Tool, 1980. I was beginning to feel the pressure and experiencing the extreme anxiety from all that was going on in my life. My emotions were torn between my wife, the trial, the impeachments, and basically being taken out of the day-to-day -day simple existence of prison life. I asked Babo if he knew who these eight guys were that we were being accused of murdering. He didn't answer me at the time. I wanted to know who, why, and what for, because I had no clue who they were or even what regiment they were in. The only thing I knew for sure was the fact that the DA had the testimony of 17 former NF snitches against us. Other corroborating evidence put us in the spotlight and had us on the hot seat. I asked Babo how we were going to fight this case with such a gloomy outlook. He explained that because of the way the Constitution was written, there was no Nuestra Familia. And with no NF, we couldn't win because we could not defend ourselves. So basically, we just sat there with nothing to say for ourselves and accepted whatever the outcome was going to be. This trial was just another bump in the road and life would go on. Meanwhile, Snake was taken back to the California Institute for Men, CMC at Chino. He later dropped out with others who would not testify against us. The regiment at CIM had disbanded and soon other regiments would follow in their footsteps as leaders began dropping out. Nuestra Familia, as it was once known, was failing. It was failing because of the greed of one person that led to the killing of a youngster. This was not a sanctioned hit and it brought public heat on the family. This had turned into a media circus and we were the clowns in the center ring. The first of the trial came and went. My relationship with Chris was strained at best. This was hard for her and showed when she came to visit me. I thought back to one day, my last day with her. The visit seemed to be going well, but I sensed something was wrong. As we were saying goodbye, she broke down and started crying. She wouldn't tell me what was wrong and I started to feel bad inside. I felt it in my heart. I truly loved Chris and it was real. I loved her with all my heart, but my immature and selfish dedication to the NF was in our way. I tried to call her later on, but my calls were unanswered. A month after her last visit, another hammer fell on me. I was served divorce papers. This was just another hit in a long line and bad timing for me. I understood though, if Chris had only known what was going on with me, what I was going through, the pain of losing her was overwhelming. It was obvious she didn't know nothing about the circumstances I was in because we never talked about it. I didn't want to worry or burden her with the details of the NF. Now as I think back, if I had shared my prison life with her, would she still be with me? I'll never know. The trial was taking a long time and costing a lot of money. The county was starting to cut corners to save dollars. One of those ways was to cut down on transportation and man hours on extra guards to take us back and forth from Vacaville. Soon, Bobo, Larry, and myself were transferred to a newly refurbished sanction of the county jail, saving travel costs and other expenses. So much for our scenic trips outside of the cage. The newly built section of the jail was made specifically for the three of us. It was located away from all the other inmates and had three individual cells with access by specially assigned staff only. This also eliminated all contact visits, not that I was expecting any. My only visits now were for my attorneys. As the trial progressed and evidence was presented against us, I was having doubts in my own mind as to why these guys were even killed. I didn't know any of them, yet I was being accused of being a conspirator in their demise and presented as a leader who gave the order to have them killed. The truth was that these guys testifying against us were the real culprits in these crimes. The same 17 pointing their fingers at us. As each day went on, it became more and more clear that we were fighting a losing battle. I was looking for some loopholes, anything, any chance at a dismissal or mistrial. During a courtroom break, Bobo and Larry asked me what I was going to do about the impeachment committee hearing. There wasn't much I could do now. The fact was 
that I have more knowledge concerning the issues than the impeachment committee, and I might be able to turn their verdicts around. However, my priority was to complete my trial. Then I could get back to DVI to present the evidence I had in favor of Bobble, Larry, and the others. I told them I'd do everything humanely possible to help them out and not to worry about it now. Basically, their lives were in my hands from the same Nuestra Familia that they had dedicated their lives to. Even with the future looking ever so gloomy during this period in my life, I was continuing to prove my dedication to the organization. This was because of what I believed in and I had to stay strong. Papa was looking troubled, but wouldn't share what was bothering him. His pride was standing in the way. He too was standing strong. The same went for Larry. We didn't break or give up any information for any reason. I knew this was making the DA angry and more determined on doing what he was set out to do, to make and present a solid case against us and make an example out of the three of us. With all the publicity, he was earning political capital and making the most of it. He was milking it for all it was worth and the media and public were eating it up in streaming mouthfuls. The trial continued for a few years, bringing up this and that about drugs for sale, gambling and car clubs, prostitution houses, on and on. This brings us back to the beginning of the story where I was sitting in the courtroom holding cell, waiting for the jury to come back with the verdict after a five year long trial. It was 1982 and I was waiting to know if it would mean the rest of my life in prison or would I be another condemned convict waiting for that fateful day to come? Guilty or not guilty is the question. But wait, there's more to the story. Remember the last general is still standing.